Bob. No, Julia's gonna be here any minute with her new boyfriend. So just remember that our daughter hangs out with a progressive crowd in the city. So please keep an open mind to whoever she brings home. I do not need to be reminded how to be open-minded and progressive. I voted for Obama. <laughs> Once. <laughs> hey, Mom! Oh, oh, Julia! Hey, 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 good to see you! <laughs> Honey, where is he? Oh, he's on his way, but okay. he's amazing. He's a uh, tall blonde and he works in television. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Hi, everybody! <laughs> Mom and Dad, this is Big Bird. <laughs> Hi. Uh, you're you're, you're uh, a, a bird. Dad. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's sit before the, the soup gets cold. I'm sorry, but when you said you were gay, I I, I didn't expect. I'm um, LGBTQ, Dad. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the B stands for bird. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, of course. <clears throat> What does the Q stand for? Quail. <laughs> <laughs> Do they need their own letter? Yeah, let's just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where did you two meet? Oh, we met at Bert and Ernie's wedding. Oh, <laughs> that is great. We're big fans of the gays. <laughs> <laughs> They're not a baseball team, Dad. <laughs> no, no, I, I guess. So, um, how's the soup taste? Oh, yummy! Uh, uh, what kind is it? Oh, it's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Mom? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize. I tastes like my family. <laughs> I, uh, so, um. Uh, t tell me, uh, tell me, um, about your parents. Yes. Well, uh, when my mom gave birth to my large egg, her, uh, her cloaca shattered into a thousand pieces, <laughs> and she died. <laughs> and, and, I'm sorry. And, 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 uh, and when my siblings all moved out, my, uh, my dad now, uh, lives alone. Oh, so he's an empty nester. What the hell, Dad? <laughs> he lives in an apartment. Do you also think that Native Americans still live in teepees? It's an expression. It's what people say. Yeah, racist people. Come on, babe, let's go. No, I just, I just... no honey, no, please, please. Look, your father and I, we might not always know the right thing to say and do. But understand this. We love you, and if you love Big Bird, then, well, damn it, we love Big Bird, too. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> oh, come over here, guys. Come on in, guys. Oh. <laughs> Sesame Street was brought to you by the number 26, which is how many dollars I stole from Carol's purse, and the letter N for nasty which are the things I'm going to do to Julia in the childhood bed. And live from the ATL, it's ATL Live!
Thank you. Oh, man, that music was loud. Oh, wait till the next one. Give it up for the band one more time. Community! Collaboration! Comedy! What do these three words have in common? You, they sit at the precipice. They stand on the mountaintop. They live at the crossroads of what ATL Live stands for. All the laughs live stands for community, <laughs> collaboration, Yay. and comedy. What else does it, what else do these three words have in common? You said it, they start with the letter C. Yay! <laughs> it was once foretold in a TV program, the aforementioned Sesame Street, by the late great Cookie Monster that C is for cookie, and that's good enough for me. Well, Mr. Monster, that's not good enough for me. I need collaboration, <laughs> community, and comedy. <laughs> what else starts with the letter C? Well, let me tell you what could, wait a minute. What, what could, uh, this might be another word that starts with the letter C. Canister! Yay. The word of this envelope is canister. Yay. You, can, you can put soup in it. You can put dirt in it. And then maybe some seeds made their way into that dirt. And then like you set the canister on your windowsill and then you, you forget about it. You come back to it later. And then there's a little plant in there. Maybe it's a sprout. Maybe, what else starts with C? <laughs> oh, man. What? Ow. That one. Oh, sorry. Uh, what could it be? So I thought it was a spider that it bit me, and then it wasn't. Oh, man. Ooh, conjugal visit. Ooh. Ooh, what is that? I'm not sure. I just wrote it down because I thought about it. Conjugal visit. Is that when a priest comes and visits you, tries to exercise you? <laughs> Priest says, get those demons out of here, sister. You want, I, this is how, listen, I would, <laughs> listen, I would, I would be perfectly fine with a demon inside of me, but as long as we're both done with them being inside of me, and the, the, the demon is like, check please, you know? Like at, you know how like when you're at the, the restaurant, you're eating up a plate of something, you shut up, and, uh, <laughs> You go like, check please, and then you get your check. And then you tip 25%, because if you don't, what could this one be? It could start with the letter C. It could start with the third letter of the alphabet, which is the letter C. Say it with me, the letter C. Let's do it again, the letter C. Oh. Carpet bomb? Oh no! It's like when your carpet takes a big old fart. You know? You're at home in the living room and you're like, oh, who farted? And the carpet's like, check please. What? Oh, there's one more. Oh, there's two more. Oh no! We're in for the long haul. Oh, this one's just my W9. Oh, uh, tax season. Hey, guys, give it up for tax season real quick. Oh, man. Band? Yes. Ooh, can you read from there? Candle. Candle! Candle, like after the carpet bombs the room with those big stinky toots, and the carpet's like, mm, check, please. And then you light a candle. 
Come on, I'm really tying this together, guys. Here, I'm really tying it together. I didn't plan any of that. I wrote the stuff down, but I forgot what it was because I, uh, I got nervous and my blood started to go cold. You know how, like, when you're cold, sir, like a lizard, you, you, you. What's the next one? Oh God. Oh, ooh, this one's just for me. What do you guys think it was, though? Huh? It could be anything. It could be. Yeah. Battlestar Galactica. It, that didn't start with C. There wasn't a C anywhere in Battlestar Galactica. Sorry. No, it's okay. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. It was Caterpillar. By Caterpillar, you meant cash register. <laughs> cash register. <laughs> well, guys. Well, guys, I'm all out of C words and. You know, there's one big C word you can't say these days, and oh, no. this guy right here, he was, he was back there saying, he said, see you next Tuesday. I'm like, don't do that. Don't say that word. And I'm not gonna, because it's a bad word. But you know, it's a good word. Uh, 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 Clydesdale. <laughs> right? Like the horse. You ever think about that? The ho like, those are the biggest horses you'll ever see. I'm looking at this lady right here, and she, um, she looked away. And I need, I need, and she looked away again. Well, you know, we've had a real blast. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess I gotta go. And uh, hey, are you excited for the rest of the show? Yeah. Oh man, get ready for a digital sketch. Wow, I can't believe we finally did it. We finally bought a house. At the ripe old age of 22. The old owner left a lot of stuff here. He's just been acting so strange ever since he found that dad cam. Oh. What? He won't stop telling those stupid dad jokes. Don't touch the thermostat! Just stop with the damn camera! Up to 16 hours of battery life. Are you ready to rock and roll? Why am I in this trailer? Aired. Holy Toledo. Stop acting like you're a dad! You're not a dad! Night vision capability! I'm dad! Ah! Smile for daddy! What is this? What is this, Taylor? Um, Taylor forgot to mention that he was a nominee for the best stand-up um, last year, and this was his uh, prize for losing. Uh, <laughs> forgot to mention that, Taylor. This was a submission for this year's ATL Comedy Awards for Best Comedic Trailer, submitted by lead singer of Gas Station Boner Pills, Misha Tot. Give it up. We're so excited for the stand-up comedian of the night. He was a 2020 Golden Pitcher winner of the ATL Comedy Awards. He's from Zimbabwe. He's been featured on Comedy Central. Give it up for Learn More Jonasi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, yes, I'm from Zimbabwe. You know, I've only been in America for about six months now. Very new. And growing up, it has always been my dream to come to America. Ever since I was young, I used to dream to be in this country, man. Now that I'm in America, my dreams have grown bigger. Like one of my biggest dreams right now is to go back to Zimbabwe. I cannot do this shit any longer, man. This is not the America I was promised, okay? Because <laughs> as soon as I arrived, I saw something I didn't know existed, guys. I saw homeless white people. <gasps> what? 
This guy was like, can I have a dollar? I'm like, I came here to ask you for the dollar. What, what are you talking about? I was so amazed. I was taking photos. I'm like, oh my God. I need evidence, okay? <laughs> because here's the thing, America. Here's the thing. As Africans, we watch American TV. And we love American TV. But every time we watch American TV, it always looks like Americans are enjoying their lives in America. It looks like everybody's just living the American dream. Then I was touring with a friend of mine. We passed through a place called West Virginia. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this shit? <laughs> no, man, West Virginia is America's best kept secret, okay? That should stay a secret, okay? <laughs> I'll give you another, another example. As Africans, we love American hip hop. We love that stuff. But did you guys know that because of American hip hop, the N word means something totally different in Africa? Because every time we watch it, they're always making it rain. You know, they have gold chains, gold teeth. You know, they have nice cars, nice houses. They are bitches shaking their asses in these music videos. Watching this as a boy from the village, I'm like, when I grow up, I want to go to America and become a n***g. That was my dream, guys. And then I came to America, I found out I was already a where are my bitches? Where are my bitches? <laughs> because of how you know hip hop is like the N word is not a racial slur in Africa. It's not. It's more of a lifestyle. <laughs> yes, it's how much money you have, how you dress, how you walk. Honestly, when I was in my village, if a white person called me, I would look him straight in his eyes and I'll be like, "Thank you for noticing." <laughs> I got 99 problems too. <laughs> Shit. Because <laughs> we don't understand some of the words they say in you know, hip hop music. We don't understand that stuff. Some, you know, we don't understand the context of some of the words they say. Like, you know that song from Lil Wayne, Lollipop? You know that song? We used to think that song was about a lollipop. <laughs> yeah, we had a talent show in church and we sang that song, that song in church. We're just so shady and uh, uh, I like that. Yeah, he likes lollipops. He likes lollipops like that. He likes them. <laughs> Do you guys agree with me that there's too much food in America? The food is a lot in this country, man. I was, I was a friend of mine recently. He, he looked at me. He's like, man, I am starving. I was like, no. <laughs> you are hungry, OK? <laughs> See, I know the difference, trust me. <laughs> and I started thinking to myself, do you think when I go back to Zimbabwe and someone is like, man, I am hungry. I'll be like, no, you are starving, okay? <laughs> Been to America, I know the difference, trust me. Because <laughs> I don't understand why Americans love cheese this much. You guys put cheese in everything, man. I said, day I'm eating, right? I'm actually enjoying what I'm eating with no cheese. And this lady was like, you should try adding cheese on it. <laughs> I was like, would you shut up and let me eat your pussy in peace? I mean, just <laughs> the disrespect, man, is real. <laughs> By the way, American cheese on pussy, yeah. <laughs> it tastes like freedom, OK? That's like, it's the American way, my man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah. And your products in America, they're so detailed, man. When you buy, when you buy something, there's always these details and these words, man. So I bought chicken. On the box of the chicken, it was written, non-GMO, organic, natural, fed 100% vegetation feed, raised cage free. I don't care how this chicken was raised. I don't, because where I come from, our chickens look like they have real life problems, OK? <laughs> Some of them look like they're going through divorce or something. But guess what? We still eat these motherfuckers. And they're still delicious, man. Because I've never eaten a chicken like, oh my god, I can test struggle in this chicken. This chicken was depressed. No. It's delicious. And I love tacos. I'm a big fan of tacos. I, I don't, I, I've never had tacos back in Africa. I love them so much. But I think I love tacos for the wrong reasons, guys. I love tacos because of the word taco. 
<laughs> because in my language, Shona, it's a Zimbabwe language, tacos means S. <laughs> so when I arrived in America, my friend was like, do you, do you like tacos? Yes. <laughs> I love tacos. What kind of tacos? I like them big and round. You know? He's like, well, in America, we eat tacos every Tuesday. <laughs> every Tuesday? He's like, hell yeah, man. <laughs> we just put some cheese on it. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Len Moore. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep it going for Len Moore. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, I'm so excited to bring up the next group. A couple friends of mine. Improv comedians, uh, stray comedians, you know, I found in an alley somewhere. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Una and Webb. Hi. We are going to play a little scene where my wife is going to get rid of me. She's going to divorce me. She's going to break up with me. She's had enough of me because I did something horribly embarrassing. Not something mild, something horribly, horribly embarrassing. And she's had enough of this behavior with me. And she's going to get rid of me. She's going to break up with me. What did I do that's so horribly embarrassing? You signed up for NASA. I did. I signed up for NASA. I signed up for NASA. I wanted to go into space. It's just my thing. She's had enough of this. She's going to break up with me. Before this, we asked the audience to write down confessions, things you might say during a breakup that you wouldn't normally say. We, ha we don't know what they are, but they're in our pockets, and we're going to pull those out and read those confessions that you have written as if they were our own words. So I signed up for NASA. She's had enough of it. This game is called Confessions. Give her a little love, a little sugar. Here it is. NASA. Yeah. I got the little pin that goes right here. I see it. It's a little, got a little rocket. It's beautiful. I'm like a rocket man now. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I just can't do this anymore. Come on. I cannot do it anymore. I'm going out there, man, or I'm going to work with people who talk to people who do go out there. Yeah. What about me? You. You spend so much time in space. But we text a lot. It doesn't, it doesn't count. It's not I, I it's send not pictures. I send pictures. I, I can't do it anymore. Oh, come on. It's, I'm done. It's not like I'm sitting on the moon far away. I'm just curious about NASA. Like, what does it mean, NASA? I don't know. <laughs> We're done. Come on. I can't. I can't. I, I don't want to do it anymore. Don't say that. I love you. I love you more than the moon and Uranus. <laughs> it's not enough. I'm done. OK. You disgust me. Oh. I can't even look at you. I'm, You'd rather be on the moon than with me? How am I supposed to take that? How am I supposed to feel about being second rate at all times? Think of the lack of gravity up there. You can bounce. How can you compare it to? I mean, you do. You compare them. I can bounce. I bounce all the time. I'm bouncing across the living room all the time, and you don't even notice. Well, the truth is, there's some things I should tell you. I should get off my. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's just, over. just in the spirit of you know full transparency, okay. I have been selling pictures of you online. <laughs> Some of them fetch a good fee. <laughs> OK. OK. I, you know what? That's fine, because I, I don't need you anymore, and that's fine. But, but I also it, let the neighbor boy watch you sleep. <laughs> he little likes Timmy? it. Little Timmy? That's why he's always knocking on the door? He's growing up. <laughs> OK, but look, you're, you're, you're Bearing it all now, so I'm, I have a few things to say, too. I get out of the shower naked in front of your brother all the time. I knew it! Yeah. I knew it. He's always smiling, and he's so clean. And he doesn't want to go to NASA. 
He doesn't have what it takes to go to NASA. You know, to fly in those big airplanes, you got to have the right stuff. And to go all the way to the moon, you got to have better stuff. Yeah, well, you know what? I had sex with your father last Christmas as well, so. <laughs> and you know what? My, wait a minute. He was good. <laughs> he was real. My real dad? Good. Real sensitive, you know, like, loved his touch. Well, if we're getting stuff off of our chest, I, 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 I wear your clothes when you go to work. <laughs> Well, that explains it. And I don't drive Uber at night. I have a whole other family on the other side of town. And how do they feel about you going to NASA? They love it. They got NASA jackets. They got posters. They're all about it. They're not like, hey, don't go out in space like you. Well, I really feel sorry for the people the that you're going to be on body, deck with. Because Earth body. I think your breath smells like a New York taxi driver's butt. Yeah. That's, I feel sorry for your little uh, That's your little just playmate. insulting, okay? Yeah? I'm a person with my own physical issues. You know this. I have four buttholes like a Play-Doh factory. Boy, don't I know it. <laughs> it's don't not I know an it. easy life. Well, you know, I threw up in the jambalaya last week when I cooked it. <laughs> and you ate it. Oh! Yeah. Well, I stuck your toothbrush in the end of the dog every single morning. <laughs> Stick it right in there. Oh my God, that explains so much. Yeah. That's disgusting. Well, I made out with your mom on New Year's Eve. She didn't seem to mind it. You. Yeah, your mom. She was real sensitive too. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. yeah. You uh -huh. slept with my father, you made out with my mom. Well, fine, I slept with Hillary Clinton when I was in college. <laughs> well. Not only that, I, I have detailed that. maps. <laughs> Detailed maps and plans to bury you alive in the forest, and I spent way too much time with Michael Jackson when I was a kid. Oh. You know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you're going to NASA. Good. I am. I'm glad. Good. I used to think that the moon was the night sky's butthole. Did you know that? And now you're gonna go. You're gonna go up into that butthole in and the I'm sky. And I'm gonna find out for you. I will go to the butthole well, of space. Yeah. See. <laughs> All right. Um, now we have the 2022 Best Quick Clip winner from the ATL Comedy Awards. Um, best Quick Clip is anything under two minutes. So give it up. Come on down to Crazy Mel's Auto Emporium, home of the customer guarantee. No double talk. Dabba, dabba, dabba. No credit limit. <laughs> And I will not treat you like a surrogate for my dead son. Mel Jr. died in a kayaking accident a few months ago that wasn't my fault. And right now, he would have been exactly your age. But at Crazy Mel's, we will not muss your hair, call you Mr. Fussy, take you to a minor league baseball game. Other dealerships will make you come to Thanksgiving dinner and tell them about the special girl you're dating. Gobble, gobble, not here. I might show too much interest in your throwing arm or give you advice on fishing, but that's it. How can we offer these big savings? to a handsome young man like you. Simple, I've lost all interest in the living world. <laughs> this was supposed to be a family business, but that dream died with my son. How come these unbelievable bargains don't keep me awake at night? My sleep is heavily medicated. So come on down to Crazy Mills Auto Emporium where our prices ain't just crazy. They're clinically depressed. All right, give it up for Gas Station Boner Pills.
<laughs> right there, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys probably want to know a little bit more about the band, right? No. No. Yeah. No, they I really you guys. They really don't. I think you do. And uh, this time we'll be able to hear them really well, I believe. <laughs> You know, because this is a comedy show, you of wanna... course we know, right? Yeah, we haven't really but can you guys believe that, that we have a band like this that gets us in all of our feels? Oh, you know what I'm so saying? How are you like so there's, there's some warm and fuzzy stuff going on right now, and uh -oh. you guys are bringing it. Yeah. Right? Period. What's that? Oh, shit, shit. Shut the fuck up. So, all right. <laughs> do you guys, like when you guys are rehearsing and stuff, do you ever... Um, here, you guys stand right there, like like in a line, um, or like right here. We'll put you right here. This is like cats. Okay, so we just did a song. We just did a song about cats. This is Sam, uh, Sean, and Misha. Hello. Um, you know the the um, happy birthday, Misha. They said I was going to be like herding cats, and it is. Come on back over. We're herding cats. You know what? I really feel like I need to ask you guys a really powerful question. <laughs> you just, you just go with the okay. question. Just well, last, question. Year, last year, last <laughs> year, this guy right here adopted a cat. I know. Yeah, I was it was there. a stray cat. Yes. The cat came to band practice yes. and left with Sean. Yes. He didn't know better. No. And then yeah. there was another cat that yes. came in. It came from the dick of that cat. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, so, that, was, that was one. Yeah, and so, later. and Misha has been very, uh, the cat loves Misha too. Does the cat, cat love you? You know, is it, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you asked this question. Um, <laughs> So this might have inspired the song, I Hate Your Cat. Is this what inspired the song? No, it's actually it's about political, geopolitical climate right now that's going on right now. This is a very deep song to us. Yes. And a cat is a metaphor for the, how people are being treated right now in this America. It's just, it's about a fucking cat. It's about a fucking cat. It's about a fucking cat. When you guys are doing your band performances, do you sometimes just break down and cry over yes. this song? All the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I kind of thought. Yeah. Actually. It went yeah. all the time. I'm a, uh, yeah. I'm a contagious crier. So if I Are see you a contagious cry, crier? Yeah. I, if I see someone cry, I already I cry did that too. question. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a one-year anniversary right now yeah. for your band. We're this old is enough. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. one years old, We're and boys. it's Misha's birthday, a day before my birthday, just so you know. But you have, but yeah. you have a show. Tell us about your show. We have a show in Star Bar Saturday. You're normally they just play uh, birthday parties, uh, wedding but, but was, wedding uh, venues. In fact, yes, I don't know about like and bar we, and we bars. Do both. We do both. Usually in bars. You guys, what does it feel like to be the ones that have really broken through and brought punk rock to men over sixty? First of all, how dare you touch me? Uh, <laughs> we. Yeah, don't touch it. He's, He's uh, bad. We invented punk rock. We're the first and only We're the first band. band. <laughs> um, Nobody had done it no before. No more touching. I'm not going to touch him ever have. again. Uh, no, they, we're, we're, we're a hit with the 70 and plus crowd. If you see how loud we are, we're the only music they can hear. So, <laughs> we're, uh, so we're really excited for it. And uh, 70 and over, they don't like Great. those questions either. Yeah, so I have a question. You guys are pretty much all actors, and you do videos and what like that. But you have a, a podcast, mm -hmm. and it's about movies, that right? That is true. And no one touches you during that what's, podcast what's either. What's funny is I've actually never watched a movie before, so it's interesting that I chose to do it. Okay, so okay, let's just say I got. I have a very, I have very hard hitting questions, so reporter style. Next year, the Batman is they're going to do another Batman because they do Batmans all the time. Right. You three are cast, okay? Yes. You get to choose who plays Batman, who plays Robin, and why is Sean Alfred? Well, Sean is, Sean is Alfred for obvious reasons. <laughs> Basically. Also, my two middle names are Alexander and Frederick Alfred. Yeah, it checks out. So it, kind it of does. Out. It, it checks out. I'm, I'm actually going to be playing. I'm actually going to be playing the bat signal. So I'm just. <laughs> playing, it's a method act. Yeah. I want to be in Method extra. acting. Okay. All right. Um, I, I already asked that question. The very last question I really, we really, really need to know is, we know. I mean, like you guys say, you grew up together. Oh, yes. No. Um, and <laughs> we're teaching them how to yes and here. Yes <laughs> and okay. Problem. They're from Cleveland, um, and they even have a, a movie they're making called Hometown. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. Right. But what we really know, this band is just really a way to get um, the Russian spy network going. But my Shh. real question, my real question in this, you, um, you guys grew up together. Watch. Listen, this is hard hitting stuff. Okay. 
Sean grew up with you. Is he just better at getting rid of the accent? Is he also a spy, or did he just does Comrade, he not even know what's going on? This is secret stuff, but you guys listen. He's it's secret. At that. Comrade, you guys are going to tell. Listen, we are asking Comrade. questions here. Yes, we are asking the questions. You let her make the speech. <laughs> no, no, I will. Yes, 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 and I don't know how <laughs> they drug the nice. Uh, more Russian jokes. Uh, Georgia guy into this, but anyway, His give it up for show them me that because <laughs> they are very good sports. <laughs> all right, gas station boner fills you all. <laughs> Here comes Shane to make it. Oh. If you didn't love that interview enough, we have more for you. Uh, we have an ensemble from Village Theater, uh, a group of improvisers that's going to come up and their source material was this interview. All right? <laughs> so you got to see it again. Please give it up for your improvisers. Oh, right here. Oh, right here. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Have fun. All right. No. no. <laughs> Am I? Oh, OK. Good. I I'm guess I'll word. talk, <laughs> since I unfortunately know most of you. Um, <laughs> hey, gas station boner pills. Um, <laughs> the best part about going on after gas station boner pills is... It's easy. It is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and it can only go up. <laughs> we're from Village Theater. <laughs> and we're going to do some Armando based on whatever that was that just happened <laughs> on stage. So it was not it's gonna be really good. It was not <laughs> you should have paid attention. It was not, I was. I was locked in, but I don't know what I learned just now. <laughs> All right, but let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. All yeah. Right. Did you want to talk about it first? No. No. Let's just go for no, it. Right. Okay, go, for go for it. it. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm so glad we grew up together and know so much about each other. <laughs> you know, you've been like, yeah. like a play cousin that's also my schoolmate and my friend. Yeah, and also like Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beverly, you are the bomb. Thanks. Yeah. Jessica. <laughs> but you know, if we start a band together, uh huh, we can make music about Boners. Oh my god. <laughs> I freaking love boners. boners. That's all I ever think about. I'm gonna walk in this direction for no reason and then come back. No, wait, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking to do the same. Maybe we switch positions. Okay. <laughs> wait, no, no, please. I heard that you two want to make music about boners yeah. in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah Reginald. Can what's you help the problem? Us? I can't help you. You can? What, bro? I may be a simple Georgian. <laughs> <laughs> but I know a little something about Cleveland. <laughs> and voters. Wait. Wait. Only if our target demographic can be men over 60. 70 specifically. Uh, 70 preferably. With bad hearing. I was unclear on the number that was specified earlier. <laughs> and and I understand we play our music so loud that the lyrics do not matter. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to I'm going to stand over here for some reason. I um I would prefer to be over here now. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to face the other direction. Okay. Okay. I just want to say I'm from uh, some vaguely Eastern Bloc country in Europe um, where our personality is vodka and uh, yeah, our language looks like it's yelling and I wait in a lot of lines. <laughs> okay guys, three, two, one. <laughs> No, 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 hey! Fuck! Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you, uh, <laughs> it's okay. No, I know, dude, but I cry. You cry because it's continuing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... Meow! I hate this it's fucking just, cat! I just, it's not that, it's not... Meow! Oh my god! I hate this fucking cat! 
this the, the, yeah. <laughs> that's my best friend. That's my the best fuck? friend. Okay? That's our new song. <laughs> no, it's not. Unless it's a hefty metaphor carrying a lot of weight <laughs> on its back. <laughs> And it's just trying to drag, oh god, no, capitalism, no. the geopolitical situation. This is the geopolitical situation? All of it. The whole geo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Whiskers. No, no, I think I should. No, you're, you're out. You're out. Get out of my house. I'm out, I'm out of the band? Yeah. If I'm going to cry now, it's going to be with Whiskers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my friend. I miss my friend so much. <laughs> what the? Stop yelling at my cat. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll see you at Star Bar Saturday night. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, are you okay? No. <laughs> What's wrong, sweetheart? My bat signal stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm sorry. Um, Don't look at it. Okay. <laughs> Is that your bat signal right there? Yeah. Oh, well, I know you're not used to seeing it when it's like all dark and stuff. <laughs> It's, yeah, I'm sorry. I no, it's I don't, don't care about your bat signal. I'm I only care about your emotions and your well being. So please tell me what I can do for you. You need a grilled cheese? <laughs> Batman needs grilled cheese. You do? Yes. Okay, well I'm gonna go make one, okay? Well, can you make it too? <laughs> sorry, my arms are getting tired, I could use a grilled cheese, Miss Parker. Yeah. That shadow was talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank Absolutely. You. What was the name there? Ah, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. well, let me just give you a little old hug right okay. here. Oh, oh what yeah. a. Okay. Great. That was a good hug. <laughs> okay. Now you just work on that bad signal. Okay. I thought I was doing good. Yeah. I kind of feel like the bat signal might start working again. Look, I don't want to make confrontation happen right now. Uh, oh, really? That's kind of what Batman's all about. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm not the bat signal anymore, then. I'm an extra. I'm just going to pop up behind you at random times and be present. <laughs> That's really cool of you. Batman! Oh, well, yes! It's the chief. <laughs> Thank you, chief. You got to be out there and some shit. There's someone out there requesting that everyone show their buttholes. <laughs> when are you going to get to work? <laughs> oh, it's just what I feared. Nobody's, buttholes? Yes, what? nobody's going to be able to see buttholes, or maybe they'll be seeing too many. I can't remember what you said, but unfortunately... Well, I don't mean to stop this production, but I feel like we've said buttholes. Lot tonight. <laughs> and that's that a, is, yeah, it's you, kind of embarrassing. Right? Yeah, yeah, you told us that, that was the one thing we shouldn't say. I mean, you could say it a few times, but after a while, we, it's just losing its. Should we use another? What, what? We should replace it with something. My bat hole. Like hole. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, bat hole. my bat that's hole. My bat right there. That's yeah. right there. All right, pick so, it up. Okay. Pick it up. Well, anyways. Batman. Bad holes are being requested on hats <laughs> and paraphernalia all over the all over Gotham City. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna have a very low, gravelly sounding voice and be really upset because unfortunately my bat signal <coughs> With that voice on no, Batman? Oh yes, yeah. You could really start a band. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> like on some Nickelback shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more of like a bat dance. <laughs> oh, you don't like this accent? <laughs> nah. I don't like it. <laughs> you think it's too much or like, or like too little? <laughs> it's a little bit much. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like, no, I'm cultured. Guys, we grew up on the same cul de sac. Like, you can't. It's just that we rode 
I learned my training wheels with you guys, and now when did this? This isn't. This isn't you. Yeah, the some of us did AP. <laughs> yeah, and you walked in in cowboy boots and a cowboy hat because you grew up on a farm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an identity crisis. <laughs> look, I don't. I was adopted. You're fine. You're fine. I know this has always been you. It's her that I'm concerned about because I think she's just trying to rip you off. I think she's trying to hop on your back, make you, make you her identity. Okay? I just like I can't take this anymore. Why would you do this to me? Look at him. Look him in the eyes. I'm not doing anything to either. She lost it a little bit there. Yeah, no, she did. I did not. Hey, hey. <laughs> No, no, press her for it, press her for it. Where are you from? West Virginia. <laughs> that was it, that was it. You improved it, trust me. You raised its value. More awkward! That's our show! The Twitter account, where we get a handle on the news. That's right, this is the Twitter account where we get a handle on the news. This is the news portion of the show where all the news comes straight from the Twitter feed. Scientists are working on reincarnating a woolly mammoth and are expecting its return in as soon as four years. Said officials, cool, but for the love of God, please leave that squirrel thing in the ice where it belongs. <laughs> A family in the UK went viral this week for looking after a magpie that got completely hammered on fermented apples. The children said they felt well prepared to take care of the magpie after learning about birds in school and spending holidays with Uncle Rick. <laughs> a California couple was finally able to free themselves after they had accidentally locked themselves in their own dog crates. Said the husband, sweetie, this isn't what I meant by doggy style. It gets better, I promise. <laughs> a newly discovered green comet flew by Earth last week, even coming close enough to be seen by the naked eye. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but would somebody please check on Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Director Michael Bay has been charged with inadvertently killing a pigeon on the set of a movie he was filming in Italy in 2019. Bay is refuting the charges, saying if he wanted to kill the pigeon, he just would have made a few sequels to it. <laughs> a 29-year-old woman has been arrested after posing as a student for a week at a New Jersey high school. And if you think that's impressive, I once posed as a college student for six whole years. That would be me in the Fanta Grape. A 100-year-old granite statue of meatpacking magnate Charles Swanston was recently decapitated. And frankly, the only thing I could think to do with this story is what I like to call a pun run. So here we go. This confirms that Swanston had always been taken for granite. <laughs> this was the work of a stone-cold criminal. <laughs> it's a shame because Swanston was always a real bedrock of the community. And is it just me, or do these protesters keep getting bolder? <laughs> you know, I think the thieves were just trying to get ahead in life. <laughs> and there is one more. Apparently, the statue now is where the local kids go for necking. <laughs> Thank you, sir. An Australian mining company has apologized after losing a highly radioactive capsule on a nearly 900 mile stretch of Western Australia Highway. So, I guess that explains these. <laughs> a Michigan priest who had a near-death experience claims he went to hell and heard demons using Rihanna's music to torture people. To comment, Rihanna stated, what can I say, even the devil pays more than Spotify. <laughs> Sticking it to Spotify. Now, in local news, the Cobb County Water Rescue Team pulled an SUV out of the Chattahoochee River, saving the driver inside. Incidentally, by removing the SUV, the rescue team inadvertently removed the cleanest part of the river. 
Now, speaking of local news, here at the Twitter account, we say why just read about headlines of what's going on in your own backyard from Twitter when you can get a first-hand account. So joining us today, we have a genuine Atlanta-based business owner. Please give a warm Twitter account welcome to Lawrence Goldstein. Hey, 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 man, play me on. Hey, that's right there he is. Hey, 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 all right, yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah, that's right. I'm Lawrence Gold, John C. Timmers. That's me. John C. Timmers. <laughs> oh, that's it's my, good to see that's, you. That's it's good to see oh, you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. and I needed this. What is this? Like a talk show or something? That's exactly what this is. It's yeah. beautiful in here. Did you direct this yourself? You know what? I wish I could take credit. Oh, I remember when I had a TV. When you, okay, so. John, let me show you something. Okay. Let me show you something. I can't. Do you know what this is? I think that's a uh, $1 it's bill. It's a $1 bill. John, have you ever seen a $1 bill like this before? Yes, I have. Look at it, John. This is a dollar bill. It's the only dollar bill I've ever had. Oh, John, I needed this. John, I'm so happy to be here. Because I have nowhere else to go. Lawrence, Lawrence I'm happy to have you here. Can I ask? What John, <laughs> ask me anything. What line of business are you in exactly? Oh, business, my one true love. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> business! Business, why have you forsaken me? Business, you do not know what you do to me, business! So are you, are you, you're, are you saying you're out of business? Oh no, I'm always in business. Okay. This audience here, yeah. that's a business. Have you ever held a newborn baby? <laughs> I actually have. My younger brother had a baby. Your younger brother has a baby. Have you ever... Looked that baby in the eyes and said, you young man or woman, you could be a business one day. Uh. John, no one's kissed me in years. What's your next question? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Lawrence. I was just going to say I didn't think oh, of the baby as a business. Uh, How George Washington. George Washington. What, maybe we'll, we can talk about what was the first business you started? The first business I ever started was the most extravagant, most beautifulest thing I ever had created with my own two hands. I mean, you walked in there and you were like, this is a business. Which sold? Oh, so many things. So many godforsaken things. Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? I need somewhere to go. I, I don't think I'm understanding anything that you're trying to say to me right Business now. Business lives in all of us. Okay. I want all of you to go home right after this show. Thank you. Look in the mirror and say to that person you see on the other side of the mirror, because I know it's a trick. I know someone is on the other side pretending to be me. Okay. Quit pretending it's not a reflection. Those do not exist. That's a business. There is someone higher than the mirror they have to pay to pretend to be me. I'm so close to solving the riddle of the man in the mirror who is me. Okay. It seems like you've really got the entrepreneurial spirit. Oh, God, John, I'm so scared. <laughs> I just, I don't know how much longer I can go. I'm, I'm 43 and a half. Wow, I mean, six months from now? John, is this even a business? What? It's Would you say what you do, George? No. Would you say what you do is a business? I mean, if I'm thinking like Lawrence Goldstein. I Lawrence Goldstein doesn't think. <laughs> what, what does Lord and Gold, Lawrence Goldstein do? Lawrence Goldstein is a firecracker. Lawrence Goldstein sold all of his assets 
for more assets. <laughs> and it just doesn't make sense anymore, John. Well, we go back a long time, huh? Uh, I think I just met you when you came out on stage. You and me, but that's so long ago. It's in sure. business years, that's a billion, jillion years. Things move fast on the, the markets. <laughs> I, I do believe that. Now, markets, that, that could be a business. Markets cannot be a business. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you got this idea that. Where is it? Where's this idea that I still need one markets of those. could be business? <laughs> uh, I was just sort of trying to put myself in your mindset. Anything could be a business. You're right, John. I've been awfully hard on you, and I haven't explained the lickety split of anything. And uh, you know, I like to keep my business associates in the dark. I'm sorry, are you saying that I'm one of your business associates? John, I've come here today to ask you if you would like to go into business. Lawrence Goldstein, everybody. Thank you. I need my dollar. This is my dollar. No one can have it. A British medical clinic <laughs> accidentally sent all its patients a text message saying they had aggressive lung cancer, later sending a mass apology text clarifying that the first text was intended to contain well wishes. Sadly, one patient then received a third text message saying, sorry, but you actually do have lung cancer. <laughs> That's awful. And finally, <laughs> finally, Stone Age rock paintings of a woman were recently discovered in France. Archaeologists are excited. They're finally able to discern how old your mom is. And that's been the Twitter account, everybody, where we get a handle on the news. For ATL Live, I'm John Simmers. Please enjoy the rest of the show. And now what you've all been waiting for, an international. <laughs> uh, now presenting a world premiere of an international sketch uh, from the ATL Comedy Awards from Phase Fire Films. Please enjoy. Are they near? Can they hear me? Are they hungry? Are they hungry? Rumbly in my tumbly. Oh. It hungers so much. Nothing left, not even a humble pie. Oh. I promised I would never peel another banana. Oh. A rumbling tum tum has awoken the roommate. What about the mystical freezer box? Oh. Below. Oh. No, there's only pain and sorrow in there. Never again. should make the Milky Delights. No! You should shake the Milky Delights! I will not make them! 
I will not make. Make him. I will not. <laughs> I will. I think it's time to make the milkshake. <laughs> But my milkshakes. are in the yard. Sorry, I got, I got really into it. Woo! Hello. Hey. What's up? Gosh, 12.30 at night in the rock band. Woo! <laughs> I'm awake. Oh, man. Listen, y'all. We have something really special. Who here has heard of Colin Quinn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actor, writer, comedian. Got a start on this little show, I don't know, called MTV. Wrote for a show called Saturday Night Live. Come on, y'all. Yeah. That's a big stinking deal. You know what else is a big deal? Being a military vet. Being a sports fanatic. And being a math teacher from Florida. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's welcome the Colin Quinn. Let's go! Nice to see you. Hey, before before we sit down, um, yeah. let's just kind of address the elephant in the room. Yeah, that you thought you were showing the people I, I, a I mean, C-list celebrity uh, and you got a Y-list celebrity, yeah, like yeah. A nobody. Some people might say that's not Colin Quinn. No, yes, it is. Okay, do you have any evidence? Yeah, like, yeah, me? like it's on my driver's license, a couple of like piece of paper that says I'm uh -huh. smart. Even got like oh, tatted out, you know, like, <laughs> okay. put my name on there. He literally so. tattooed himself. Okay, listen, yeah. tell me a little bit about your 
You said military? Pay? Yeah, I did that. So thanks for that applause earlier, guys. Appreciate you. So I didn't really do anything special. I was just, I was in the Air Force. Uh, all the other branches nicknamed it Chair Force. Uh, did five <laughs> years. And uh, I got out early. And then they became Space Force. Mm. I could have said I was Space Force, but. But you became a teacher. Who loves teachers up in here? <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Tell yeah. me, why did you want to become a teacher? What was well, your? Well, you, you know, I was I was getting out. I was trying to figure out what to do. You know, I was watching the news and uh, saw a lot of things going on in the profession. I oh. just thought, you know, those female teachers need an adult male option on campus. So, <laughs> you know, right there, I was like. You know, they're going to jail. Got to stop, you know, keep That's them from going so to jail. That's so Yeah, I thought so. Colin Quinn. Um, yeah. So how's that going? Did you, I don't know, have any success in that area? or? Oh, yeah, you can't kiss and tell. I mean, what, what do you mean? Okay. I mean, I guess you could. I mean, but uh, yeah, no, they're crazy. They're crazy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see them on the news. They're already getting arrested. I thought it was a, it was they, a great idea. They, they are crazy. Crazy. You know, nuts. I mean, you've seen them get arrested already. I thought that was a good idea, but no, it didn't work. Are you saying women are crazy? No, no, women teachers. Okay. Just the teachers. <laughs> Not the rest of them. You know, there's plenty of them here. Any, any teachers? No? Good? <laughs> Sweet, I'm, I'm alive. So how do you measure crazy? Uh, on a scale of four to ten, it automatically starts at a four. You know, like that Matrix. You know, there's already on YouTube. Uh, how I met your uh, How I met your mother. Yeah, the hot what crazy you, Matrix. What are you talking about? A Matrix. You know, you've seen math, right? You got the Y axis, the X axis. Okay. You know, you guys seen How I Met Your Mother, right? Yeah, Sheldon talked about it. How crazy Matrix. Sheldon's on another show. Anyway. Oh, so I got the wrong show, right? Yeah, that's okay. yeah I'm so, sorry. So, like, what is like the perfect medium there? Is like a certain uh, subject, you know, of uh, teacher that you're trying to. Oh, subject-wise, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean. The Fifty Shades of Grey, that's all English teachers, you know, like all that. You know, if you're dating a science teacher, you're going to be bored. That's just flat out bored. Uh, math teachers, I mean, shit, shit, you know the golden rule in math, right? What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if you've got a math teacher, okay, guys, okay, yeah. so, you know, go get your gas um, station okay, boner right, pills right, and you're all right. Let's, what's the hardest part of being a teacher? Uh, parents. Really? Yeah. Why? Parents. Oh, dude. They, I mean, their kid can't do anything wrong. You know, if it's a divorced parent, they're sexually harassing the male teachers. Sexual you know. harassment? Yeah. You know, Have you're talking you been about. Sexually harassed? Sure. I'm parent. just like, Mrs. Smith, this is not a way to get your child an A. Maybe a B, but no, not an A. <laughs> Sounds like you've been through a lot. Yeah. I know um, Colin Quinn, one of the cool things about him is he's really public about his, the other Colin Quinn, about his. Yeah, that guy up there. You know, when I had hair. Path to recovery. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I know we had been briefly you know. met earlier, and you said that you kind of had a, yeah, if you he, don't mind sharing. Just no, he's, uh, he's a recovering alcoholic, been sober. Um, Shit, I think 40 years now, That's since incredible. like right when he started. Yeah. Um, me, I'm a recovering Catholic. Um, you know, yeah. Yes, yeah, we, got, we got another one right there. What, what, are you, what are you recovering from? Recovering Catholic? Oh, Catholic guilt. Um, also, the fact that, you know, I wasn't picked by one of the priests. You know, that's, that's, that's yeah, it's not been helpful on my self-esteem whatsoever. So are you just guilt-free now? Yeah, totally, you know, yeah. just, just quit, quit church, quit going to mass, you know, no confessionals. Awesome. Cool, so um, are you, um, it's kind of personal question, but studying another religion or? Yeah, the religion of sports ontology. We got a, we got a big festival this Sunday. Uh, we call it the Super Bowl. Um, those of you who are smart, take Monday off, National Hangover Day. All right. Don't, so don't, anyways, don't go to work. Colin Quinn, um, man, there's a lot of similarities here. For real, yeah, for real, you were both born New York. in New York. Yep. That, that's true. Yes, that that's is true. That's true. Okay. 5'8"? Yeah, I, uh, I'm actually 5'9". Uh, the graphics guy, I think, ripped me off an inch. <laughs> How'd you do with that? Okay. I, I think and, I... Uh, What's the 609 reach situation? Oh, listen, if you don't have an O in your 69, you're doing something wrong. All right. Hey, um, blue eye color, let's skip that. Ruben. I've, I've never had a Ruben before. Is never that, had like a, a Ruben? New York thing? What's on oh, there? it's beautiful. It's, uh, uh, yeah, definitely a Northeast thing. Uh, big Irish corned beef, uh, but instead of corned beef and cabbage, rye bread, corned beef, 
Sauerkraut, Thousand Island dressing. That sounds gross. That sounds too much. Um, Why would you know about good food? Listen, listen, I, for real, for real, growing up with this name. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're all poking fun at it, but has sure. it been kind of hard and frustrating? Like, what were your parents thinking? <laughs> well, um, no, I mean, for, uh, frustrating in the sense that my father is also Colin Quinn. I'm Colin Quinn Jr. So I've had to live with it the whole time. I didn't meet this guy until like 1985. You met him? No, you know, TV. You know, I guess I saw it on TV. Oh. Yeah, just guy on a TV show called Remote Control. And it said he had his own little channel. It said Sing Along with Colin. I'm like, oh. I'm five years old, you know. So, but uh, no, I, I had uh, not so much him. Uh, I, I get it every now and again when you know I get a credit card and it says Colin Quinn Jr. Yeah. Colin Quinn's your dad. Yep. Yeah. The real yeah. Colin Quinn? Not fake. The comedian? It's your, funny dude. Your dad's Colin Quinn. You're Colin Quinn. Yeah. That's wild. So yeah. here's the situation with what's in the name. And Dom, let's all give it up for Dom. Dom's a yes. freaking incredible, yes. incredible human. And this whole idea with what's in the name is like this weird hierarchy we put on somebody's name or position. Yeah. Like there's somebody more valuable than other people. Sure. And so it's interesting, like with your dad being like the OG Colin Quinn. Right. I was wondering, just to kind of finish this up here, what is something maybe your dad passed on to you about the name Colin Quinn? I, I love the fact that we yeah. get to celebrate my dad too on that. Today's his birthday, actually, his Yay. 67th birthday. 67 is a prime number for the math lesson, just so you guys know. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about my dad is he just takes it a moment at a time. Um, mm -hmm. He's now at the part where he gets to be the old guy at the bar and get away with it. You know, where, where everybody's like, oh, how cute. Where if I said it, like, you disgusting pig. You know, so that's, uh, but uh, no, just get to live a moment at a time and just enjoy life and laugh at everything. You know, don't, don't take anything serious. Just laugh at, Come on. yeah, f face value, so. That's right. Yeah. Is that so. your story? Yeah, uh, in the words of this Colin Quinn, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let's give it up for Colin Quinn, y'all. Clap it up. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, so for the regular ATL Comedy Awards, the winners walk away with a golden pitcher. So for our last segment, we are giving away an off the handle award. So. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your laugh? <laughs> yep. Uh, so we will be watching four quick clips of people in the wild. These aren't like sketches. These are like real videos that people have taken. And then at the end of those four clips, you'll see a QR code so you can pull out your phone and you can vote for your favorite. And then we'll give out the award. Sound good? Yeah? Uh, all right. So hit it. <laughs> Go! which was you helping me, who erased my phone? Uh, we did not erase your phone. Okay, then what did you do to my phone? I have no idea. I don't remember, but... No. You don't remember. What I would like we, to talk to somebody above you. What do we do to your phone? You erased my phone. Were we trying to respect, or what were we doing?
together and made this happen tonight, but I want to bring one guy to the stage. You heard his laugh earlier. <laughs> you ready? He's looking at his 50 tabs on his computer. <laughs> Truly. Give it up for Dominic Riccano. Yeah, so you never forget you first, um, and I would never want to forget any one of you. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, there's more of these to come, and thanks for sharing all the laughs. Have a good night. It's 3 a.m. in Atlanta. All I want to do is dance. They kick me out of fucking buckle. Someone shake my pants. Go! Yeah! 